वेलकम टू डेंटल टॉक्स टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट ओस्टियोमाइलिटिस नाउ ओस्टियोमाइलिटिस इज नथिंग जस्ट इन्फ्लेमेशन ऑफ द बोन सो वेन एवर योर बोन्स आर गेटिंग इन्फ्लेम्ड ओके वेन एवर योर बोन इज गेटिंग इन्फ्लेम दैट इज नोन एज योर ऑस्टियो माइलिटिस द वर्ड ऑस्टियो हेयर इफ यू डिवाइडेड द वर्ड ऑस्टियो मीन्स बोन एंड माइलिटीज मीन्स इन्फ्लेमेशन and so this makes of the osteomyelitis okay it could be of two type like any other problem it could be of two type it could be acute or chronic okay now what is acute acute is something where you are going to see pus formation just give me a minute here okay so whenever you are going to see a pus formation associated that is said as your acute osteomyelitis which means there is suppuration which is been seen okay as we come to chronic chronic might have suppuration that means it might have the pus formation it might not have the pus formation so when it is not having the pus formation was it what it is happening is sclerosis what do you mean by sclerosis here sclerosis means excessive of the bone formation so when there is this excess of the bone formation that is what do you say to be the sclerosis the other term for this is the proliferation of the bone so in the acute you are clinically seeing the pus okay there's pus visible but in the cro- chronic one there could be pus or it could be no pus and in that condition you might see sclerosis as there now sclerosis like in the case when you having no pus and you having sclerosis it could be of three types okay so the first one is the chronic focal sclerosing osteomyelitis what do you mean by focal focus word se yaad rakho at one particular site it is being seen okay now talking about the other one that is the chronic diffuse sclerosing osteomyelitis what do you mean by scl- diffuse here which means it is comprising of a larger segment not just one particular point but a larger diffuse bone okay and gary's osteomyelitis is a completely different concept which we will definitely cover moving to the first one that is the acute osteomyelitis as i said in the acute osteomyelitis just remember one thing there is pus formation there is suppuration which is present it is a micro uh, polymicrobial infection which means a number of microorganisms are responsible for it but the two main important one we have to remember is the staph aureus and the staph albus other than that streptococci bacteroids and the porphyromonas porphyromonas are also there coming to the pathogenesis if you see how is this whole osteomyelitis thing happening the first thing that happens is your inflammation so for example just keep imagining this scenario this is the bone any inflammation happens at the site the next thing going to happen is the pus formation so there would be endosteal pus formation like this inside of the bone there would be pus formation this pus formation is going to decrease the diameter of the bone okay the diameter is going to get decreased as the diameter decreases there would be compression of the blood vessels now the blood vessels are passing here they are going to get compressed and so the vascular supply is going to be compromised this leads to the necrosis of the bone so whenever the vascular supply is necro- uh, compromised which means decreased blood supply is there so obviously the bone is going to get necrosed right after the necrosis has occurred this what is formed is said to be the dead bone or the sequestrum this is very important what is sequestrum it is nothing but a dead bone which is formed because of the necrosis happening because of a uh, compromised vascular supply next what we see is the involucrum so now what happens if this is your dead bone so if this here is your dead bone around your dead bone is going to be formation of a healthy bone this is going to be formation of a healthy bone and now this healthy bone which has got amazing vascular supply this is what you say as your involucrum okay now this healthy bone it puts pressure over this dead bone which leads to condition like severe pain fever paresthesia and trismus so whenever you see there is severe pain fever paresthesia and trismus why because this healthy bone here it is going to put a lot of pressure on the dead bone now radiographically if you see it is going to give you a moth eaten appearance for treatment of this condition we can give 
uh, antibiotics we can drain the pus but very very important debridement of the sequestrum which means removal of the dead bone is very very important so the dead bone is to be removed surgically so that these conditions or these problems could be subsided coming to the chronic osteomyelitis chronic osteomyelitis could be again as i have just told you it could be suppurative or it could be sclerosis now when your acute condition when the acute condition it persist for longer period of time it changes into chronic we know this very well right whenever any acute thing it is getting transferred to a very long period it gets converted into a chronic thing so nothing new to understand in this one coming to the sclerosis sclerosis as i said new bone formation is seen here new bone formation is going to be seen here now this new bone formation just a minute this new bone formation could be either focal diffuse or garis three type what do you see in the chronic focal sclerosing osteomyelitis this is also said to be the condensing osteitis very important clinically we might see these things in the radiograph what happens is suppuration is going to be absent here instead the sclerosis is seen which means new bone formation is seen so what you will see in a x-ray that this is a very uh, famous tooth which you see in the x-ray and this tooth can have this periapical radio opacity not radio lucency okay it is opacity because this is a bone this is a bone which is formed okay so that is what you see it can have so firstly it is going to be radio lucent then it becomes mixed but at the end when it is coming to the condensing ostitis stage it is going to get converted into a radio opaque structure and mostly it is associated with a non vital tooth see how this uh, if you have to see the picture wait i'll add a picture see this is how it looks like okay this is you see a bony very radio opaque structure is been present here this is what your ostitis sorry your condensing ostitis looks like okay the condensing ostitis it looks like this so this is this bony scar so this is not radio lucent it is completely bony right now this is what is your ostitis condensing ostitis okay so as we move what is a bone scar so imagine you have extracted this tooth the tooth which is in association with the bone uh, with the condensing ostitis you have removed or you have surgically extracted this tooth now what will happen this side is going to be left here okay this is left here and this structure is said to be what this structure is said to be the bone scar so after extraction when a bony fragment is been left when a bone fragment is been left after the extraction that is what you say as a bone scar so after surgical removal of sclerosed bone there might or the sclerosed tooth there could be removal of some of the fragments behind there could be presence of some of the fragments behind and that is what you say as your bone fragments or your bone scar very famous bone scar so in this video we have talk about the acute one and the chronic osteomyelitis type 1 that is the focal one which is also said to be the condensing ostitis in the part 2 of the video we'll be talking about the diffuse and the garis osteomyelitis thank you so much